Nearly four years ago, I took you all on a journey. A journey of love when we checked out the movie Princess Cut. And what a journey it was. We met a naive girl named Grace who had to learn that important lesson that we all eventually have to face. We're dating the wrong guy. We've all had those bad relationships where we awkwardly discover that the guy we're dating didn't realize he was dating us. Why does this keep happening to me? We've all dated a guy who took our relationship to a level that is much too physical. Much more physical. And then we have to seek the wisdom of our fathers. We can use your wisdom. We've all come to the conclusion that the best person in the world to pick who we're gonna marry is our dad. I think the answer's been right in front of us all along. Sweeties. It's an all too realistic tale as old as time. Well, ladies and gentlemen, today, the love journey continues. The moment that we've all been saving ourselves for. A moment I can't even believe I'm getting to tell you guys about. We take a look at the sequel to Princess Cut. I know we've all been wondering what happens next in this saga. What have our characters been up to? Will this movie live up to the high standards of its predecessor? Will it enlighten us on the true meaning of love? And will we finally find out what happened to the land developer that wanted to buy the soy farm? There's really only one way to find out. I think you know what it is. Grab your soybeans and get ready for my movie night review of Princess Cut 2 Hearts on Fire. Oof. <laughs> Already feeling, feeling the burn in my heart. Let's go! So the movie begins by introducing us to a new girl, a new princess. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, no thank you, hashtag not my princess. And she goes on a run, which, uh, uh, let me stop you right there. I haven't personally had the best experiences with movies that begin like this. That's me, working hard, searching for my self-worth. Princess Cut 2, hearts on fire. Oh look, the mom from the first movie, good. Whew, I was worried this wasn't gonna be in the same universe as the original movie. I'm pretty invested in the Anderson family and their soy farm, so yeah, good. Well, this is Lauren. Lauren is running from the house to this clinic that we'll see in just a second. Just remember how difficult it was for her to run that distance, because that's gonna come into play later. Just keep it in mind. Keep in mind this face. She's struggling a little bit, isn't she? And she's married to this hunk of a guy. My Mr. Anderson, I do believe you were catcalling me. Oh. Anderson, that's the name of the family from the first movie. You probably know that because I mentioned it just a second ago, not because you remember anything from the first movie. Though the movie not only expects you to be as obsessed and knowledgeable about this film franchise as I am, but it also somehow expects you to remember characters from the previous movie, even if they've recast those characters with somebody who's like twice their age. Because this is Grace's brother. That's right, this kid is now this guy. This guy is now this guy. And he married this girl. Well, I might just have to tell my husband. Though they like to pretend they aren't married. I'm sure it keeps things real exciting. But then everything goes wrong. Okay, no, not everything yet. That'll come later too. This old lady drives up Lauren! with her injured husband. And we headed to the clinic. Grace, Grace! God's grace. And we finally see our favorite character ever. Back here, come on. Come here, come on. Good boy. How do they take this guy with a hurt leg to an abortion clinic? Whoops, <laughs> wrong movie. All right, well, we see that Clint Masters, <laughs> that is a name you don't wanna say too quickly. I am the master of the clinic. He has, in the time since we saw him last, been able to open up his free clinic, or his clintic, if you will. Hope to have my own family practice one day. And Grace is working there. Is Clint here? No, just me, he's at the hospital. As a, a nurse or a, Whatever. We're gonna take good care of you, okay? We just need to stop the bleeding. And we get our first indication that not all is well in paradise. We just never have what we need. Use this. Here. Use my unwashed field dressing knife. If it's good enough for Bambi, it's good enough for this old coot. Dear Lord, I come before you and I pray for my friend oh. Marty. What? It's just, if you get accused of proselytizing, then we might get our government grant pulled and then we run the risk of this becoming a God's Not Dead movie. He's fine, everything's fine. The shock just caught up to him. <laughs> well, later Clint comes back. Well, you know, if we could afford a doctor full time, and, we've been over and supplies, and a real computer, and a roof that isn't caving in. We're a free clinic. 
and an urgent care. We can't afford to keep up with anything. We need more funding. And if Grace's character's sole purpose being to drive home this one particular what? point wasn't enough for you to get it, yep. that's when we find out that the foundation is pulling the funding. Foundation is, is pulling the funding. No, I was so invested. Why? I can't afford an expense or something. That... Or whatever, I don't know. It was just a heads up, but. A heads up, but. This year's gonna be rough. Well, maybe these people who like own farms could uh, stop using the free clinic as their own personal emergency room. Just an idea. I just talked to the CFO three days ago. He didn't say a word. I'm, I'm sorry. I guess I should have told you last night. I don't know. Maybe I could have if you'd have been home instead of being out with the CFO. That's when we get some joyous news. Lauren is having a bad case of morning sickness. But Clint doesn't get it. Wait, what's going on? And you're a doctor. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. Keep it away from Grace then. That's how I know you're the one. All right, let's uh, stop the sarcasm here just for a second, all right? I think it was at this moment in the movie that I realized that this movie may not be quite as cringy as the previous one. These two actors, they have some chemistry, something we never saw in the previous film. So kudos to you, movie, for stepping up your game. Well, true to classic princess cut style, Grace lays out her plans for a fantastic sisters-in-law evening on their way to the car. We are gonna do some sense knocking, stop by your store, then girls night out, and all things baby. Okay, let's do it. Grace makes her way down to whoever and tries to convince them not to pull the funding. Why didn't you mention that you're pulling our funding? Miss Masters, we've got a board meeting in two weeks. The guy is like, look, write up a proposal. I'll take it to the board. And Grace is not having any of that. Draw up a proposal. Don't. Just please. Tell me why. Tell me why. He's been clinic no longer fits our mission. Maybe if you guys would do abortions, we would consider it. Is that the implication here that they're... <laughs> They're not offering abortions. We're doing God's work. What happened to the whole providing compassionate aid to the least of these in your mission statement? Or do you only believe in helping hospitals who give 35 cent of every dollar to helping treat people? We have two part-time staff members. Everyone else works for free. All I'm asking for is a little perspective. Wow. So after that epic speech, the guy from the foundation relents. Okay, two weeks. You draw up a prospectus, five-year plan, and I'll make an appeal to the board. Okay. <laughs> but that's what he said to do before she gave the speech. Draw up a proposal. Don't. I don't know why these movies always have to have these financial trouble subplots. All of the situations seem pretty fixable. But what do I know? It wouldn't be a princess cut movie without some sort of financial trouble situation that never gets concluded. Well, our new princess is just amazed at the tenacity of OG princess. Uh, wow. You totally just changed that guy's mind entirely. Understandably so. I mean, Grace has gone from being the most naive character I have ever seen. I was so confused. To this very headstrong, hard-headed character uh, who is still pretty naive. I know, I had no idea I was gonna say any of that. <laughs> For the fans, the true fans of the previous film, I'm sure you're all sitting there saying, Kevin, there is a specific character that we all are wondering where they're at, what are they up to, what happened to Tessa? Tessa? You know, Grace's old worldly non-Christian friend. Now every time we're together, he wants to go somewhere secluded. And what's wrong with that? Kiss tons of guys, it's not a big deal. Guess where I am. Jail. <laughs> Can you come tonight for dinner? Uh, Say yes. I'm with my sister-in-law. Bring her, fine. Bye. So we princess cut over to them having dinner. And boy, oh boy, do we get <laughs> classic Tessa. Oh man, she's rude. What do you do? I own a little fitness swear boutique in town. She's blunt. Your employees are super rude. She's very worldly and non-Christian. Your prices? I don't know. It's what we've come to know and love. Seriously, what is with the weird vibe? It's the place, right? <laughs> Two grand a month, unreal. Whoa! Two thousand dollars a month? What? What is she dating, Elon Musk? Are you insane? Interior designers don't make that much money. I know. Believe me, I know. I've looked. I'm not saying two thousand a month is a wise move for like the average pay of an interior designer. <laughs> It's just a weird number to pick. It's not that impossible. If you lived on ramen and got enough freelance jobs, I think you'd be okay. <laughs> She's even living with her boss. Wait, this is your boss's place? In this super duper, extremely fancy apartment. He has expensive taste. Uh, impeccable taste. Mm. Impeccable $2,000 a month taste. I am moving in. <laughs> 
He proposed and you didn't tell me. Married people dream of being single. And single people dream of being married. I'm just choosing the best <sighs> of both worlds. Tessa, did you not even see the first movie? I am happy that you are happy. But being wise is more important than being happy, especially when it comes to men. What's Clint up to? <laughs> you are too much. <laughs> oh, Tessa. You know, you finally inquire about my actual life. You're, you're too much. When they get home, Lauren is surprised and pretty upset to find out that her husband has done the unthinkable. What's the matter? Your mother? So even though she was like telling everybody at the clinic about the baby, she now, for some reason, is upset that the mom knows about it. It's just sort of slipped out. Okay, all right. Well, she's pregnant, so what are you gonna do? She's hormones, am I right? Women! She kind of let the cat out of the bag earlier. Actually, it was more like you let the barf out of the bag. Hey! We find out that Lauren is really struggling, I guess, with the baby stuff. I don't know what I'm doing. But like a good neighbor and husband, Robert sets her mind at ease. You're gonna be a great mom. And like I said, I think these two characters have great chemistry. So this scene actually comes across really cute and believable. Which is surprising, mainly because I assume he met her through putting an ad for a girlfriend in the newspaper. Is it here? I mean, is she here? <laughs> <laughs> well, later, Grace is doing her other hobby, woodworking in the barn. I guess since she literally had no personality, interests, hobbies in the last movie besides finding a guy and getting a ring, she was a nice blank slate where they could just Give her a bunch of interests. Use it up, wear it out, make it do, or do without. <laughs> what? Are, they, are those ludicrous lyrics? What are you working on? <sighs> Just something for Tessa. Proverbs 24, through wisdom a house is built. How do you think of this stuff? What, it's not, it's from the Bible. She didn't think it up. <laughs> You're a good friend. Only a true friend would spend this much time on a passive aggressive comment. Then Uncle Drew shows up! Uncle Drew! Uncle Drew! The younger of the Brothers of Grace is played by a new actor as well. Remember in the previous movie, he almost died when he got hit by a car because God was punishing Grace for kissing her boyfriend, but it looks like he's okay now. Well, this is when the two princesses finally get to have a heart to heart. Pregnancy hormones. <laughs> oh, well, it only gets more fun from here. <laughs> crazy mood swings and weird cravings and prego brain. <laughs> mm, I hate prego brain. I mean, it's definitely way more watery than ragu brain. And we learn what's truly bothering Lauren. The farm is everything. Oh, 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 I forgot. I don't know if you guys have put this together yet, but uh, dad is dead. He's surely not alive. Robert, he has all these plans. But I can't see him letting any of this go. And uh, now we find out why. I can't let the farm take him like it took your dad. <sighs> yes, the struggle with the farm killed him. Is that like, like a struggle with a wood chipper? Probably, yeah. I don't think mom would appreciate that thought. Mom controls, controls our, thoughts, our thoughts, okay? okay. We might, we might hear you. Never, never think, think, think about, think about bad, 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 very upset, upset, upset if we think about think bad, just, bad, just very, very deep, deep. Deep. One thing my family has taught me, it's never, ever learn from your past. <laughs> Keep happening to me. Do you know Robert? Yes, he's my brother. He will let it wear him out and break him down. <laughs> you know, I'm only half joking here about this mom controlling their thoughts. We start to learn that the mother actually is kind of destroying this family. Everybody in the family is so afraid to live their lives, which I don't know, it's kind of expected, I guess. The dad trained his family not to make any choices without their father's wisdom. He never seemed to raise his kid with the expectation that he would one day not be there anymore and they would actually have to make choices for themselves. Now that he's gone, what do you expect? A little bit surprising that the movie's portraying this struggle. And now we get to see the toll that this is taking on Uncle Drew. Mr. Agro Biz Major. Turns out he has done the unthinkable. Switch my major. He changed his major. If it's one thing you don't change, it's your majors. English lit. <laughs> Why? Janice Sawyer. <laughs> or a girl. <laughs> yeah. Girls are, d they're dumb. You're an idiot. Why would anybody make any change in their life for a girl? Ew. Gross. And I've already read one Jane Austen novel. <laughs> no! <laughs> Jane Austen. Total crap. Why don't you just read the novelization of Princess Cut, okay? It's all you need. This isn't starting well. What's not starting well? Uh, the movie. This is most devastating to Lauren because her whole plan in life was for her and Robert to move away from the farm as soon as Uncle Drew comes home to run it. I'm not coming back to the farm after graduation. 
now that he's changed his major, it affects everybody. What? Because of some girl? Dude, you know you're not allowed to get married without dad's blessing, and dad's gone. You're never getting married. It's just not what I want to do. What are you planning on telling mom? Later. All right, enough of this relatable human drama. What we're here for is to find out how the Anderson soy crop is doing. Well, it turns out, not well. Argentinian soy trash is the price anymore. Gosh, I hope their neighbor Miguel comes along so we can hear a really long conversation about all of this stuff. Oh, wait. Greetings, Miguel. You getting much of a harvest this year? We just converted 20 acres into permaculture plots. Oh, permaculture plots? Wow, interesting. And a new um, hydroponic greenhouse next month. You know, though, this is the kind of riveting conversation about soy farming that made us fall in love with the Princess Cut franchise. You gotta throw in this kind of fan service or you'll lose your core audience. Drew was studying agro at NC State. He probably knows all about that. Uh -oh. Diversification, year round yields. Yeah. It sounds about right. Can't he just say like, uh, yeah, I haven't taken that class yet. I mean, I know that's lying, but he's already lying. So, I don't know, poor kid. What are we talking about? Wow, diversification and year round yields. Gosh, that sounds great. Say that 10 times fast, why don't you? I did. Diversification and year round, diversification and year round, and year round yields. Diversification and year round yields. Winter wheat. Great. Well, it's at this point, Lauren decides it's time for her to call Robert into the barn and sum up all the conflict in the movie for the audience. We are talking about taking out another line of credit. Yeah, for a better payoff. For a gamble. Let's push the farm even further into debt. Not to mention dropping out of school. Just for one semester, Lauren. Uh, yeah, right. And no more second store. Not this year, probably not next year either. I didn't say that, all right? You didn't have to. Because I just did. Someone's got to do the exposition around here. This is the farm. A permanent state of, oh wait, never mind. Hi, I noticed there is some tension here. Can I make it worse? What we need to do is not always what we want to do. But don't we need a full-time farm manager? Lauren, God will be our full-time farm manager. And God says you have to give up your dreams for this failing business you married into. Just a few more seasons. And don't forget about Drew. Uncle Drew! God will take care of us all. <laughs> Oh, boy. Meanwhile, Clint drops his daughter off at the free clinic. Oof, that is something you never want to have to do. <laughs> Oof. Mommy has a whole lot of work to do, so you play anywhere except for the office right now. Anywhere you want in this doctor's office, except where your mom is. Stay out of her sight, play with the syringes. Uh, that's right, they don't, they don't have enough funding for syringes. They're just using knives. Just jabbing people with them. I gotta go help Uncle Robert do some work. So at this point, ladies and gentlemen, we are 20 minutes into our movie. And I gotta say, it's it's pretty standard princess cut. Sure, it's got a few better actors and it certainly is not as cringy as the previous movie. But at its core, it's still nothing really happening except misunderstandings, miscommunications, conversations, about farming. Well, hold your horses, ladies and gentlemen. Hold them close because we are about to be thrown deep into a massive twist in more ways than one. We'll get right into it right after these messages. After these messages, we'll be right back. If you're enjoying this review and want to see more of my content, then you might want to check out my subscription service. It's called SGK Plus. Just head over to SagaNightKevin.com slash SGK Plus or sign up for my Patreon, Patreon.com slash SagaNightKev. Over there, you get all kinds of bonus content that you don't find here on my YouTube channel. We do live watch parties just about every Wednesday. Those often become some of the movies that I end up reviewing here or behind the scenes content. Like we just watched the behind the scenes documentary of teen musical and it was really funny. And all of those watch parties are archived so you could go back and watch any of the ones that I've done in the past. Plus I have unreleased videos and videos that have been taken down from YouTube for stupid reasons, probably. And every month I have a Zoom call where you can actually talk to me. It's a lot of fun. So that sounds like something you'd be interested in. I'll see you there. Let's get back to Grace 
and the gang. And we're back, everybody. Welcome back to Princess Cut Radio. It's time once again for one of our classic hits, a Princess Cut staple, an oldie but a goodie. You'll know it when you hear it. It's the Anderson family needing everybody else to help them out with their failing farm montage. Right here on WPRSS, The Princess. The Princess. You're listening to 95.1. 95.1. The, the home of faith and grace in the morning. Your favorite commercial free Christian cliches all day long. As the family is out taking care of their field, keeping watch over their soy harvest by uh, day. Wait, it. I thought this guy had his own farm. Wasn't he talking about like special industrialized crop assortment or something? Is this like a yearly thing that all of the neighbors have to come and help them with their crop because they just can't get it done? Maybe they're just bad at this. Probably should have sold it years ago. So, as I said, a twist comes. And by twist, I mean twister. That's right, a tornado. Twister sighted. And if only they'd gotten the funding, they could have fixed this leak five years ago when it started, it seems. We have a major problem. Hey, there was a tornado sighted in the area. You need to get Paige and get out now. Just don't abort her, okay? I know how you get when big storms come. Get over, come out. Your shoes are all bloody. Nobody ever said abortion was pretty. That's when the ceiling came in. No! Oh. Things get very intense. I mean, it probably would be a little more intense if I couldn't clearly tell that this is a drop ceiling. Like, it's just foam. You can just probably push your way out of this situation. I can't get out! Guys, can you hear me? Oh, no. Yeah, it's the most frustrating tornado scene since Man of Steel. Look at me, I need you to go get daddy. Mommy can't get out, okay? Run as fast as you can. Yes, little girl, run out into the tornado. Especially since we already saw at the beginning of the movie, this run is not an easy run. Uh... No! This <laughs> the fast as you can! They can't catch me. I'm the Clint Master Man. That's when a tornado princess cuts its way right through the Clintic. Dad, you have to leave him. My gosh, they did it. They finally did it. You maniac! Darn you! Fortunately, Clint is able to still outrun the tornado. And the rest of the family survives. Yeah, so uh, Grace dies in a tornado. Whew. That is a twist I bet you didn't see coming. Oh, if only they'd have gotten the funding from earlier from that guy. Well, the next day, or probably a few days later, since there's truck marks unless they were cleaning up the debris from the tornado during the tornado. Not the unicorn! Well, let's not jump to conclusions. Maybe she's still alive. Maybe she's okay. Maybe she just got taken away to the magical land of Oz and... Oh. oh. Never mind. That's definitely one way to dethrone the princess. I'm guessing they wanted to move the franchise in a different direction or... Or Ashley didn't want to be in the movie. Who the heck knows? I'm trying to compose myself. This definitely is the last straw for Grace's mom. It kind of pushes her over the edge. After losing her husband in what I assume was an extremely brutal and bloody farming accident, probably brought on by one of Grace's many sins. Everything's a mess. Now she's lost her daughter as well. She it's goes so catatonic. Nice oh. We have angered the gods. We must make a child sacrifice to the soy gods. Uh. I'll never change. Be faithful. And I'm sure I can guess the question that is on everybody's mind. What? Is Tess, is Tess up, up to, to right, right now? now? Well, what do you think is happening to her? Something we all saw coming since the first movie. That's right, she is pregnant out of wedlock. ruh -roh. Well, Tessa, how's that old marriage is just a number thing working out for you now, huh? 
I'm just choosing the best of both worlds. Serves you right. This is probably the worst news I'm gonna hear all day, probably. <sighs> but that's when Tessa sees the news about the tornado. Channel 12's Letitia Whirl oh. is on site in East Bend now. Letitia, what do you see? Turn up. Disaster. We're trying to figure out, I mean, where it came from. It just came out of nowhere. You can see all the rubble in the background here and... <laughs> Where did it come from? It's a tornado. It came from the sky. Great reporting. Fantastic reporting there. <laughs> I mean, it's just total chaos. No words. No words whatsoever. Fire truck. Please okay. truck. Dump truck. And those are just a few of the types of trucks that I know. Pouring out of nearby <laughs> Well, there you have it. Whew. I don't know. I'm I'm trying to make jokes. I'm trying to have a little bit of fun here. But I can honestly say at this point, if you don't feel it like in my review, when watching the movie, you feel the genuine emotion enter the movie. I really do think that this is probably the first time in the entire princess cut saga that I feel this human emotion. It's about time. And speaking of time, I must say that another positive thing is the movie actually takes its time. Like, if I had a heart still, I would definitely be feeling sad at this point. So, I mean, <laughs> bravo. And it's not just like, oh, montage time, oh. But it's a real reflective moment. It's definitely not something I was expecting. So, pretty cool. Well, after the movie breathes, the mom in her depression is combing through the rubble and finds that woodworking project that Grace was uh, working on. You guys remember? Who was it for? Tessa! All right, so cut over to her and she has to break the news to her boyfriend. I'm pregnant. What? Oh no, oh no. I'm just kidding, I'm not pregnant. Psych! Mm. You're just kidding? Is that how you'd react? Yeah, that's how I'd react. Ah, that's... <sighs> tough situation. That's crazy town. And speaking of tough situations, we cut back over to another tough situation. I'd like to take a few moments to analyze this scene. That's what we're here for, right? Criticizing and reviewing the way movies are made so we can all learn a little thing or two for once in your lifetime. Let's walk through it. Lauren is at the farmhouse. She sees that the mom has pulled that thing that Grace had made for Tessa and put it up in her house. So she's like, hey, uh, <laughs> so you found this, huh? I'd recognize Grace's design style anywhere. It was a sign, lesson from the ruins. And after hearing the mom say that, she still decides to tell her the truth. Grace? Yes. She made this for Tessa. <laughs> Which sounds cold hearted, right? I would have just let her have her memento. Oh. I'm sorry, Catherine. Well. But. Let's pretend for a second that this is very intentional by the filmmakers. I don't think I have precedent for that, princessident, but we're gonna go with it. So there are times when doing these reviews where I have to differentiate between whether something is a flaw in the script or if it's a flaw or something that is consistent with the character in the movie. And I'll be honest, as I comb through this movie, I think this script and the characters, I can't believe I'm saying this about a princess cut movie, are actually put together surprisingly well. Why am I saying this? See, Lauren's biggest frustration, she is so freaking sick of her whole family that she's married into constantly walking on eggshells, keeping information from the mom just so they can protect her feelings. It's all ruining Lauren's life. And as an outsider looking in, she's like, this is wrong. Even though the easiest thing in this situation would just be to lie. And I think that what we're going to see is the positive ramifications of Lauren making the choice between what is easy and what is right. It's solid. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Meanwhile, somebody else is having to learn a valuable lesson about honesty. Obviously for her at this point, this is harder to do. She made it harder. You have a choice. No, I don't. Yes, you do. No, Grace isn't at the clinic anymore. It was blown away. There's literally nowhere for me to go to get that done. <laughs> All right, so true to Grace's wishes, Lauren goes to Tessa, where she's surprised to find that Tessa is right in the middle of a fit of overacting. What do you want? I have something for you. You can just leave. Do you want a drink? 
Where is Devin? Who knows? Who cares? Ooh, that's frustrating. I also wanted to check on you. I know that Grace was your best friend. Scoring from Mother Nature. That's when Lauren realizes that there's some deeper hurting here. Deep hurting. There's something bothering her that's beyond a measly best friend dying in a tornado. What? Mother and daughter are private together? Get out of town! Yes, Lauren is able to reach her through the magic of maternal connection. All right, let's take a jog over to Lauren's running business, where she's hanging out with the director's wife, and they're having this riveting conversation about the financials of the store. Exciting. 0.82% shrinkage. Yeah, shrinkage, that's never good. You didn't hire me for accounting. You hired me for my acting skills. As far as I can tell, it's looking better than expected. We learned that Lauren might be the only person in this entire franchise that is actually running a successful business. Best year so far, hands down. Next year is looking really good. And they say it might be time for the Charlotte expansion. Numbers don't lie. I know what I would do. That's just me. And I did used to be a waitress after all. What can I get for you? Well, how about this, ladies and gentlemen? The movie is taking us on a journey of an actual struggle <laughs> with not knowing if you made the right decision in your life or not. Who knew that all Christian movies needed all this time with indecisive characters who are presented with unpredictable life choices? So Lauren decides because of how well her store is going, she's gonna move forward with the Charlotte expansion. I wanna move forward with the Charlotte expansion. Which is great. I mean, good for her. How much you wanna bet the farm and the mom and her hubby are going to screw all of that up? $10? That's great, honey. But where's the money coming from? A small business loan, using the existing store as collateral. It's now or never. All right. Now get back to work. <laughs> Well, as the story progresses, Tessa and Lauren's friendship begins to blossom. And Tessa is even able to use her interior design skills to help Lauren better her store. So everything's about flow. Well, for the next few months, we won't have to worry about that. Oh. <laughs> design my new store for me. <laughs> what? But as Lauren is reaching for something up on a ladder, that's when everything goes wrong! No! But it's okay. Or is it? It is. For now, we'll never know. Well, I mean, we do know. The baby is fine, if that's what you were worried about. That's amazing. Whew. That was a close one. I mean, I, I don't think I was emotionally prepared for something like that to happen. What a relief. Well, then we get a montage of everything going right. Oh, look at that bountiful harvest. Well, at this point, I assume they stop being able to afford a big star like Clint. So him and his daughter leave for Colorado for the rest of the movie. Hey, let's go. I love you. Have a good rest of the franchise. I guess the town can go without a doctor anymore. You know, I bet that investor guy who Grace was bothering about getting funding for the clinic is pretty happy to have her out of his hair. Well, I guess with the in-law that she actually likes out of the picture, the mother begins to set her sights on Lauren and tension begins to boil. She reorganized my entire kitchen. Who does that? Maybe it makes more sense this way. Ooh, he's in big trouble now. You do not reorganize another woman's kitchen. So now we have this conflict brewing where Lauren has this pressure to seize the moment with her business because her business is doing well. And though there's no guarantee with any business, she's like, this is my big shot. That of course is pitted against her husband feeling this obligation to the farm, especially at this point when they've had so many things go wrong, like a bad crop, the dad dying, and now a tornado destroying the house. How do we recover the farm without a house? And a bunch of like insurance claim stuff that I didn't leave in the review because it was boring. But you guys get the idea. So Lauren is caught in a very difficult situation as we learn from this conversation with Tessa. Too many unknowns right now. And as long as I've known the Andersons, all they've done is fight to survive on that place. Maybe it's time to realize it's not your thing. They'll never sell, so. Do you even know how much it's worth? Maybe you find that out first. So Lauren takes this advice to try to find out how much the farm is worth. It would be good to have that option since everybody's in this terrible financial situation. And she finds out that this is the answer to all of their problems. The farm is worth a lot of money. Millions. This would solve everything. Not every problem. Obviously, mo' money, mo' problems. But this would 
solve all the problems within the movie. I mean, with that kind of money, they could probably afford like a $2,000 a month apartment. Just sell the farm. Do it. There's literally no point in keeping it anymore. You guys aren't good at running it. You never have been. It's been 15 years and nobody there wants to run the farm. The mom's not gonna do it. Put her in a home. Well, meanwhile, Tessa is dealing with some new problems. Who are you and why are you in my house? Marissa. Wenis. Wait, wait, what do you think you're doing? I'm getting clothes for Devin for our weekend in Cancun. Your little domestic charade is almost done. Clock's ticking. And then the guy from the bank comes to the house and uh, this is like remnants of other princess cut. He's super unprofessional and completely unaware of the situation. What are you doing here? Oh, it's okay. I'm not here for a visit. I just came to drop off some information. You went to a land developer? I think I may have misread this. I apologize. Why would he do this? We are not selling. I mean, I guess the only explanation I can think of is the fact that there's no way he could have known that he was walking up on the farm of the most delusional farmers ever imaginable. Mrs. Anderson, I am sorry. You are welcome to leave, sir. I would get it. If they had a thriving family business and then the government was coming in and they were trying to take the land at some unreasonable price and sell it to Walmart for the good of the community or something like that. That makes sense. That's kind of a plot device that's used in movies a lot. But every time we check in on this family, they prove that they suck at being farmers. <laughs> so why wouldn't they sell the land to people who don't. That way they can just go and, and do something that they are good at, or they could go be bad farmers on a cheaper plot of land. There you go. See, easily solved situation. And this has been Kevin's economics soapbox. Microeconomics, of course. You had no right to go behind my back. I didn't go behind your back. He wouldn't have come here if it wasn't God, for you. Well, fortunately, this brings us to Lauren. Finally, telling the mom exactly what she's needed to hear pretty much all along. I sit here every day and I listen to all the arguments and the doubt and the stress that this place puts on our lives. Jim might still be here if it weren't for the sake of this property. Hey. Have you ever thought that maybe it would be better to just walk away? You go, girl. Good for you, Lauren. Listen to the Do man. not talk to me like that. Mom, just hold on a second, okay? Nobody has given up this farm. I'm not talking about that. Mom, wait, hold on just one second. Please. All right. But then everything goes wrong again. Oh. <laughs> this mom is cold hearted. Look at her. She's just walking away. Her pregnant daughter-in-law falling to the ground and she's just like, I don't even care. I'm a big foot out of here. As if there hasn't been enough sadness and loss in this movie, Lauren does lose her baby. Look, I know you just lost your baby, Lauren, but does that really excuse going to bed with your boots on? <sighs> it's just, it's a lot. And also, it was weird that they teased this earlier. The little dead baby tease. Oof, it's heart-wrenching. Very sad. And to top it all off, the icing on the cake, she wakes up to the mom and the son laughing downstairs. Oh my gosh. I heard laughing. Oh, babe, what's going on? Dude, Robert, you grew up to be such a mama's boy. He needs to grow up and be a freaking man or else he's gonna lose his hot wife. I mean, his wife, regular wife. Obviously, this gets her a little upset. I don't want you here anymore. Lauren. I want you to get out of my house. For some weird reason, she's not really in the mood to have her mother-in-law and husband ganging up on her. We were just reading a silly email from- Stop, Paige. I want you out of my house. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? And obviously the mom knows she doesn't have to listen to Lauren. So she's like, I'm, I gotta go. Get Look out. at me, no, 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 no. She's gotta get away from this crazy family. I don't belong here. I don't fit in. Baby, I don't need yes, to be here. Do. No, I don't. I can't. I can't. Oh Robert, let go of me. That makes sense. Like, she needs to leave and let Robert figure his crap out and decide, do you want your wife that you made a promise to, or are you going to just be a mama's boy? No, and boy, no, does Robert no. handle this great. No, Robert. You want to leave me? Is that what this is about? No, I just, what? I, I, I can't no. be here anymore. What? I, I can't, I can't do this. Lauren, what are you talking about? You know what's weird? And this may be projection on my part or wishful thinking or something, but this movie really feels like a true exploration of what would happen if a normal, normal person married into the messed up family from the movie Princess Cut. Your mother and I want to protect you from having any more regrets. It's actually kind of genius. I can't be what whatever this is. Finally, Robert convinces her not to leave. Stop! Nice. 
Lord, calm down, Lord. you're hysterical. You're acting like you lost your own child or something. Listen to me. You don't have to be anything. It wasn't enough. Don't say that. It wasn't enough. It wasn't enough for our baby. I wasn't strong enough, Robert. I want my baby back. You know, movie, I was there. I was feeling sad. I was almost there with you. Then you had to remind me of baby back ribs? Come on, my baby back, baby back, baby back. No, but seriously, this is a sad, heart-wrenching scene and, and really well done. So Lauren decides to stay and try to work things out. And so that's when the mom comes up to apologize. I hope that you can forgive me for my actions and my words. Of course I do. I'm sorry, what? What, what are you what? doing? Why is she apologizing? You didn't do anything wrong. It's weird. Look, I think some of this lands on the filmmakers because I don't hate this scene because it does kind of work itself out. Like they have this conversation and there's a lot of stuff that the mom says that allows her to kind of empathize. You lost a child. I lost a baby too. But because the mom doesn't apologize, it lessens the impact of everything good that she has to say. You need to grieve. Even if no one understands, this is not your fault. So, uh, yeah, things are dark and sad and, uh, and people are grieving. Then Lauren decides to check on our favorite character, Tessa. And so these two, they have a really solid heart to heart. It's real sweet. I was just too ashamed about Devin. And now it feels like that doesn't even matter. Of course it matters. But what right do I have to be sad? That's not how it works, Tessa. We're not graded on our pain. That's a really good line. We're not graded on pain. That's great advice for the audience. I want to be the kind of person that you can call and not worry about it, no matter what. So she moves forward with the Charlotte expansion. Just in time for this to be a Christmas movie. And then finally, it ends with Robert actually being a good husband and supporting his wife's dreams. Opening up a new store in Charlotte, that's realistic. But also kind of being an idiot. Do you want to spend your life scraping after every last cent? I don't know. At least it didn't end with like Lauren realizing I've been wrong to have dreams. I'm closing down the business and I'm going to work on the farm too. I genuinely was worried that that's what was going to happen. So good, glad. And maybe Princess Cut 3 is going to be Robert's journey, realizing that he needs to give up the farm because he does. <laughs> as long as I have you by my side, and as long as we follow after Jesus Christ, we will find a way through. All right, well, unfortunately, the movie does keep going, and uh, it's just, it's long, and it's like, okay, this movie should have ended by now, right? So that's where the tornado came from. So, in this, eh, bleh. All right, well, there you go. Princess Cut 2, Hearts on Fire. What does Hearts on Fire mean? I don't know. What does Princess Cut have to do with any of this? I don't know. Why did they make this a Princess Cut sequel? Maybe Princess Cut did really well financially. I don't know. I don't know. There is supposed to be a third one. Apparently they filmed them like at the same time or back to back. Matrix style, I assume. But we'll get into that. How about this one? What did I think of it? Look. <laughs> When it comes to like sequels like this, two things have to be taken into consideration. One, the movie's not for me. This movie is not made for a 35 year old man who makes YouTube videos making fun of Christian movies, right? And the other thing that has to be taken into account is that this is the same director and writer and filmmaker making this movie. This movie's light years beyond that. There are a lot of things that I appreciate about this movie. I, I feel like the movie has very relationship focused conversations. How Humans should treat other people and how Christians should treat other people. There's nuanced relationships, characters who, sure, are Christians and that's a part of their life and they don't back down on, on mentioning that, but they don't have their life all figured out. They're not perfect. They have real life choices that fall into that gray area. They're things that we deal with in life. I deal with, should I sell the family farm like every week? Those gray areas are where a lot, most of our life choices land. And sometimes even after we make those choices, we don't know if we made the right one or if, if it's, maybe the, neither one was the right choice, but you can't just sit there and not make a choice. And I feel like that kind of is represented in the character of the mom who's just not making decisions or the son who's trying to please both his mom and his wife and he can't do that. Sometimes you just have to take a risk is what I'm saying. They didn't spiritually gray area choices. And I can't say that about the first film and many other Christian films. So I appreciate that. I also appreciate the friendship that Lauren has. I mentioned before, like relationships and conversations and stuff. 
It's the kind of friendship between like a Christian and a non-Christian that I've kind of been wishing for in a Christian movie ever since we saw Josh Whedon use the death of Professor Radisson's mother as a weapon to win a debate in the original God's Not Dead movie. So those are some things. Those are some things, right? So overall, Princess Cut 2 started off super rough, really cheesy, very Princess Cut-y. After Grace died, the movie just got better. I think that actually gave the characters something worth exploring and it actually seized the opportunity to show a broken family. That moment created a weight in the universe of the movie that never existed before in the franchise. So it was impressive and it was a great move. I'm glad they took the risk. And I also, and this is, it may just be my interpretation because I talked to a friend and he said that this is, a, he doesn't think this is what the movie was about, but I think it was a cool move that they essentially made the mom's emotional connection to the farm and her manipulative control over her family kind of the bad guy of the film. And maybe the movie wasn't trying to like show the ramifications of like a father who never taught his kids to think for themselves, but I think that's what we see in this movie and I think it's portrayed pretty well. So I know I've talked a long time about this movie. There was a lot to talk about. In the end, it's not an awful movie. Clearly it's the result of growth and not just like better camera quality and a bigger budget in genuine character development, storytelling, probably the result of exploring some real life experiences and heartache, great job. And if you make this type of leap with every movie, then you guys are gonna be like freaking Steven Spielberg uh, in like, I don't know, 10 years from now. Almost to the point that I, I'm a little bit sad that it bears the name Princess Cut. <laughs> like that's too bad, right? Unless of course I've like completely misinterpreted the intention of this movie, in which case, this movie sucks. <laughs> Good night. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today uh, and for watching this review. Again, if you like this review, you like this kind of thing, check out Say Goodnight Kevin Plus. Some of the people who pledge over there are listed right here. You know, it's been a while since I've done a movie night episode and part of that is just life gets in the way. This is not my full-time job, this is my hobby. I like to put out reviews when I actually have something to make. So hopefully that that is reflected in the quality of the content that I make. And so quality, not quantity. You know, sometimes I put out the trailer reactions because those are a little quicker, and easier to put together, but also I get to talk about stuff. So there you go. All right, those are my excuses. I'll talk to you guys later. Good night. Or do you only believe in helping hospitals who give 35 cent of every dollar to helping treat people?